Welcome back to Mysteries of the Mind. Today we are going to explore the topic of PTSD. I felt strongly to do this as it affects so many people and I think there are a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings about it. Again, I will stress as I did with DID, I am not an expert and there is no possible way I could fully explore and explain this topic in this video but simply graze the surface. To start with, PTSD is not a mental illness, it is a psychological injury. One of the first descriptions of PTSD was made in 490 BC. Herodotus described an Athenian soldier going blind after witnessing the death of a fellow soldier. What is PTSD defined as post-traumatic stress disorder. It's a severe anxiety disorder that develops following exposure to extreme psychological trauma, usually due to a traumatic event. A few examples of this would be witnessing death or injury, physical assault, combat, sexual assault, accidents, natural disasters, and child sex abuse. It is during one of those traumatic events when PTSD begins to take shape. Throughout history, PTSD has also been known as railway spine, stress syndrome, shell shock, battle fatigue, and traumatic war neurosis. A few statistics about it. About 5.2 million adults suffer from PTSD during a given year. About 7-8% to of people in the U.S. will have PTSD at some point in their lives. 10% of women develop PTSD sometime in their lives, compared to only 5% of men. 30% of Vietnam veterans experience PTSD. 10% of Gulf War Desert Storm veterans experience PTSD and 11 to 20 percent of Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans experience PTSD. There is also an additional diagnosis of complex PTSD or CPTSD. Some symptoms of this would be numbness, bad memory, nightmares, insomnia, guilt, hopelessness, no focus, hallucinations, anger, self-destruction, shame, and flashbacks. And I think those affected by this would also tell you there are probably a lot more symptoms than just those. When you have post-traumatic stress disorder, your symptoms can come and go. You might feel fine until you hear a car backfire loudly. Suddenly, you become very afraid. Images of your time fighting in a war flood back. Certain triggers can set off your PTSD, and those bring back strong memories. You may feel like you're living through it all over again. Triggers can include sights, sounds, smells, or thoughts that remind you of the traumatic event in some way. Some PTSD triggers are obvious, such as seeing a news report of an assault. Others are less clear. For example, if you were attacked on a sunny day, seeing a bright blue sky might make you upset. Knowing your triggers can help you better cope with your PTSD. With PTSD, your brain doesn't process the trauma the right way. It doesn't file the memory of the event as being in the past. The result, you feel stressed and frightened even when you know you're safe. The brain attaches details, like sights or smells, to that memory. These become triggers. They act like buttons that turn on your body's alarm system. When one of them is pushed, your brain switches to danger mode. This may cause you to become frightened and your heart to start racing. The sights, sounds, and feelings of the trauma come rushing back. This is called a flashback. Anything that reminds you of what happened right before or during a trauma is a potential trigger. A number of things can trigger your PTSD. 
Some of the most common include people. Seeing a person related to the trauma may set off PTSD reactions, or someone may have a physical trait that's a reminder. For example, if someone with a beard mugged you, other bearded men may bring back memories. Thoughts and emotions, the way you felt during a traumatic event, afraid, helpless, stressed, could cause symptoms. Seeing an object that reminds you of the trauma can cue your PTSD symptoms as well. Smells are strongly tied to memories. For instance, someone who survived a fire might become upset from the smoky smell of a barbecue. Returning to the scene of a trauma is often a trigger. A type of place, like a dark hallway, may be enough to bring on a reaction. TV shows, news reports, and movies Seeing a similar trauma often sets off symptoms, feelings. Some sensations such as pain are triggers. For survivors of assault, a touch on a certain body part may lead to a flashback. Hearing specific noises, songs, or voices may bring back memories of the trauma. The taste of something like alcohol may remind you of a traumatic event. You might tie scenarios with the trauma. For instance, being stuck in an elevator might remind you of feeling trapped after a car accident. Even anniversaries. It's often hard to go through a date marked by trauma without remembering it, as is the case for many survivors of the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. Words can even be triggers. Reading or hearing certain words could cue your PTSD. Some triggers are obvious, others are subtle. In fact, you may not realize something is a trigger until you have a reaction. It may seem like your PTSD symptoms come out of the blue, but they're usually caused by an unknown trigger. Feeling as if you're in danger is a sign that you've experienced a PTSD trigger. A therapist can help you identify yours, and he can also help you learn ways to cope. There is no specific medication for PTSD. Psychotropic drugs have been shown to reduce symptoms. The most common treatment is counseling and psychotherapy. Social workers can help those who suffer from PTSD address their feelings and guide them to further resources. Studies have shown that EMDR and CBT can fully reverse the effects of PTSD. EMDR, or Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing, is a psychotherapy treatment that was originally designed to alleviate the distress associated with traumatic memories. CBT, or Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, is a short-term, goal-oriented psychotherapy treatment that takes hands-on, practical approaches to problem-solving. Its goal is to change the patterns of thinking or behavior that are behind people's difficulties and so change the way they feel. Although professionals help assist those affected through therapy and resources, Another great resource is for the family and friends that surround those affected by PTSD. Here's a few things that you can do to help. First, let's talk about what not to do. Don't call them crazy or weird. Don't tell them it's all in their head or say they're making a big deal out of nothing. Don't assume that you know what they're going through. Don't judge or pity them or try to fix them. And don't tell them to suck it up, move on, or just get over it. That being said, here are some things you can do that will be extremely helpful for them and you. Acknowledge the reality of their struggle. Offer to go with them to see a counselor. Listen to them, love them, encourage and support them, 
try to imagine a day and night in their shoes. Accept that you will never fully understand what they went through and are going through. Respect their need for space and ask them how you can help and support them and then do it. I hope this has assisted someone in better understanding PTSD a little better and maybe it helps someone. And although I'm not an expert, I am an advocate for the misunderstood. PTSD is an invisible scar with very visible effects to those suffering and those who love them. Do you know someone who has been affected by this in some way? Would you like to share your story? Do you have another story that you would like to share here or another topic you would like to see featured here? If so, contact me through any of my social media links or email me at duchessdark676 at gmail.com. See you next time.